Hey there, drone fans. Rick here again from Drone Valley. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you've probably already seen the clips I put together for the Drone Max 360 portable charging station from the guys over at Energen. Now, the reason I did those clips and the reason I'm so excited about this particular product is because I've used their products for a long time. I've got their A40 and their P40 charging station, their M10 for the Mavic, and I love the fact that I can charge the thing up at home and take this gigantic, sophisticated battery bank out with me in the field and recharge my drone batteries and a whole lot of other portable devices a couple of times, which really extends the flying day for me. So it is, in a lot of ways, a perfect charging solution. So before the Drone Max 360 came out, I'd kind of heard they were working on a product like this, and I was relentless in hammering them about specifications and release dates, when's it coming, what's it going to look like, and they were kind enough to share information with me. So I put a really initial clip together a while back just to give you a feel for what it looks like. And then we went to CES in Vegas, and I was lucky enough to find their booth, and I scored an interview with the actual design engineers that built this thing from the ground up, and asked them a lot of tough questions about the engineering behind it, what their future plans were for it, what could we charge with it, are they working on other compatible cables and such, and they were really honest and open about all the questions I had, so I enjoyed that an awful lot. Before I left there, though, I was kind of twisting their arm to say, look, man, when this thing is ready, please send me a unit. I don't even care if it's finished, just so I can play with it and test it and let you guys know what this thing can do. And they did send me that unit, it's sitting right here in front of me. Now, the bad news is, I can't keep this one because it's pre-production. I actually have to put it in a box and send it back to them later this afternoon. And a lot of you guys ask me questions beyond what I covered in the clip. You're asking me things like, what kind of batteries are in there? How do they enable the AC charging on the back? And what do the front connections look like? How durable is the thing? So I thought, you know what? I got to send it back tomorrow. The only way I'm going to answer those questions is to crack it open, right? I'm sending it back, so what could go wrong? So I thought, before I send the thing back, let me peel back the covers, give you a look inside the product. Now, I haven't done this yet, but I'm assuring you that once I peel this thing open, you're going to find all kinds of really high quality electronics inside there. So it'll be kind of an interesting thing to see if that's in fact the truth. Because if I open it up and there's a bunch of wires and stuff all hanging around inside, I've made a horrible mistake recommending this product, but I don't think that's going to be the case because I really trust the engineering behind this technology and I believe these guys did a fantastic job putting this together. But let's tear it open. So the first thing you're going to notice is there's a big rubber bump around the outside and there's no visible screws out there. The rubber bumper, I've talked about it before, is a great way to protect the device when you drop it, you're hitting some cushioning on the side and it's not going to transfer that shock to the internal electronics. It's also really good to give you clearance so when you set it down on the ground, none of the surfaces are going to actually touch that wet ground that you may be setting it down on. But that rubber bumper is in the way for me to take it apart. So let me peel it off. I think we're going to pull these guys sideways, yep, just to expose that cabinet. And then if I pull it down far enough, I can actually slide it off the cabinet. So it's a bit of a wrestling match here, but let me get it, let me get it off the cabinet. All right, there's the rubber. Let me get that out of the way. So what we have in essence then is a large metal case, much like a power supply would be in your computer at home. But you can see again, without having that rubber on there, if I laid this thing down on the ground, right away I'm hitting the switch and I'm hitting the electrical stuff on a wet ground. And if I flip it this way to use the electrical outlets, the front of it is flat against the ground. So imagine putting this thing down on dirt or wet grass, you're gonna have all that moisture getting up in front of the unit. So if I look at it closely, there's a couple of screws on the bottom. And again, these heat fins on both the sides and the top are there to radiate any heat that this thing will generate when it's charging some external device or when you're charging the device. There are heat fins on the side over here as well. And there's a fan on the back right here. So I don't think the fan comes on. I've only seen it come on when I'm using these electrical outlets and drawing a little bit of current out of those for a period of time. It may turn on to cool the electronics inside. So I've got four screws on the bottom and a number of screws on the top. Now my suspicion is there are probably printed circuit boards inside this unit that those screws are holding in place against the heat sink. On the ends, I've got four Torx right here. They look like Torx 20s. And I've got four on this end as well. So let's start on this end. I happen to have a Torx driver. And I guessed it was a 20, so let's see if it fits. Yep, it fits perfectly. So I'll pull those four screws out. Get those out of the way. Oh, I just turned the power supply on. That's probably not good. Let me, let me actually turn that off. There we go. So I got to be careful about that because that switch on the back. Again, without that rubber bumper, you'd be doing that all the time. So let me get this guy out. That's three. And here's the fourth one. Oh, I did it again. All right, I'll do it from the side. Maybe that'll be easier. All right, so when I pull that fourth screw out, Looks like the faceplate is just loose at that point. So there goes the faceplate. And the faceplate drops off. So there's your faceplate, and there are your four screws. 
that's the front of the unit. So right out of the gate, I can see there's two printed circuit boards, and I was right about those mountings. So this printed circuit board's bolted onto the bottom, that printed circuit board's bolted on the top. Now I can already tell you that it looks like this thing splits in half. I keep hitting that switch, sorry. Turn that off. Yeah, it splits in half. So let's do the same to the back. So I'm gonna pull these four Torx screws out back here. And again, it's probably now I'm bouncing on the front, so that's turning on. Boy, this is not this is not easy to do. So let me pull this guy off here. And then this guy. And again, there's four screws on the back just like there were on the front. And these are Torx T T20s. And I'll pull these two out. Yeah, and you can see that is sliding apart already. So those two halves are held together basically by the front and the back plate. All right, so I gotta be careful. All right, so I have a printed circuit board still connected there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I've got the electrical outlets that are connected to those boards. And I've got a board in the bottom and a board in the top. So let's see if I can split this without exploding anything. Be very, very careful here. Okay, so there we go. So what we've got essentially is a, gigantic battery bank in the center, and I've got several boards. Uh, these two boards look exactly the same, and those are charging boards. Yep, those are charging boards. So I've got one board, and I'll do some close-ups so of this so you can get a look at it, but I've got one board here that's connected up to the battery. I've got connections to the battery to this bottom board, and I've got connect connections over to this backboard. Now the backboard, my suspicion is since the AC portion of this charger is to the back, that backboard is what's generating that sinusoidal wave, turning this DC battery into AC at 60 hertz. And again, I did check this. They claim that it's a sinusoidal wave. A lot of these, these uh, AC inverters generate either a sawtooth wave or a modified square wave, which is not great for sensitive electronics. You wanna have as smooth a sinusoidal wave as possible, and this generates almost a perfect sinusoidal wave. So very complicated circuitry back there. And again, all really, really well put together. They've actually, on the back portion, they've got glue holding in those sockets, so they're not gonna vibrate loose. And they've got just tremendously good electronics down inside there. And I'm gonna try and get a look at the battery pack to see exactly what's inside there. On the back end of it, I've got two separate charging boards. Now, as I mentioned before, there's one board on the bottom that has the DC in connection, so when you connect it up to your charger, it's gonna charge the batteries. There's also USB-C connections on the bottom, and I've got a 12-volt output connection on the bottom as well, right here. And then on the top, I've got a USB-A and a USB-C, I'm sorry, USB-A connections, two of those that play out to the unit. You can actually use those to charge USB devices and the power button's in the center. But again, what I'm looking at here from an engineering perspective is they've got all the printed circuit boards are mounted to some aspect of the heat sink, which means any generated heat that are on those boards, because there's looks like torrid coils in there and a bunch of capacitors, a bunch of other specialized components, they're gonna get warm, both during charging cycle and the discharging cycle. So the fact that they're mounted up against this aluminum heat sink assembly means that any heat that's generated by the board is gonna be transferred through the screws, which are isolated from the board, down to this heat sink and dissipate outward. So any air outside of it that's circulating around will cool down the heat sink. So I've got that both on the top and the bottom board, which is just great. And everything in here is modular. So if I wanted to unplug this stuff and really play around with it a little bit more, I could just pull these boards apart and actually take a look at the boards a little bit more closely. But to be fair, since I don't own this one, if I do something horribly wrong with it and damage it, then I can't send it back to the company. And since they were really nice enough to trust me that I wouldn't blow up the machine before I send it back to them or their test unit, I'm not gonna go any deeper on it, but I will peel back the batteries just to get a feel for how big that battery pack is inside there. And if I can get a look at it without actually destroying it, I'll tell you what that battery bank size is. But from an engineering perspective, again, a design perspective, I like this because it's a modular enough design that if they change their minds later on about something on the back, like for example, a lot of people ask me, will it be able to support European voltage and frequencies? The answer is I don't know yet, but from the design perspective, it looks like they built it modular enough that if they're gonna sell this in Europe and it's gonna be 240 and 50 hertz, they could change out this board, use the same DC power supply, the batteries that are in there, to generate the required uh, voltage and connections specifically for the European market or any other market in the world, really. So when I look at this, I put my engineer's hat on. When I look at the way this thing's built, I think to myself, well, if I built one of these things, would I build it this way? This is exactly the way a good design engineering uh, process would go where you're saying to yourself, if we build one board that's built for the US and have to build a whole nother board for Europe, that's gonna be expensive. Really 
probably 50 or 60 percent of the components that are on here will work in both those markets. So let's build the AC inverter to be specific for the US and we'll ship it to the US market with this back plate on it. When we want to build that to be compatible with Europe or some other country, uh, we can build the inverter in there that's required for that country to give you the normal voltage you'd get in the country with the connections on the back. So they could build really like 80 percent of this as a standard unit and the 20% that had to be modified for the country would be really easy to unbolt that board, bolt a different board in for that country and ship it off to that country. And that way they can cut down on their manufacturing costs and really leverage that engineering behind it to all the different companies they're gonna to ship to. So wonderful job here. Now I'm gonna put this thing back together. I promise you guys at Energen, I've been very, very delicate with it, but I'm gonna take a few pictures of it and do some blow ups so you can see exactly what's going on inside the unit. But again, for my money, um, I didn't expect I'd open this thing up and have a rat's nest of wires in there with a bunch of batteries banging around. But the more I look at it, the more I realize they've really, really spent a lot of time designing each of these components to be as compact as possible and as safe as possible in a really incredibly durable hard shell outside that double functions as a heat sink. So pretty cool job on this unit. And again, for my money, it performs fantastically well as a portable charging bank. And again, I've used it for weeks on end. Hasn't failed me once. And now that I look inside and get a look at the electronics of it, they've really done an exceptional job at the engineering behind it. So that's pretty much it for this clip. I really appreciate you watching. I hope you find some value in these clips because I'm always curious what's going on inside a product. And one of my favorite things to do, and typically why I buy two of units when I buy drones and other things, is so I can tear them open and take a look inside. And that's exactly what I did here is to crack open the case and give you a little bit of insight into how well this company is engineered behind the scenes. And these are things you would never see because when you buy it, you're just gonna plug it in and use it. What I'm trying to do is give you a little insight beyond the basic functionality of the unit. So if you have any questions at all about this, um, I I can't really answer a lot more than what I've done in the clip because I do have to send this back tomorrow. Now, the minute these things are on sale, I've got one coming to me. I've pre-ordered one, so maybe I'll tear my own apart if you have additional questions that I've missed in this one. But that's pretty much it for today. So thanks an awful lot for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying these clips. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and that way you can join the Drone Valley family and you'll be sure you won't miss a clip that we put out. But until next time, again, a lot of fun putting these together. We'll see you soon and happy flying. Thank mm -hmm. you.